So that is, it's a much, much worse uh, problem than even what I see as being a pretty scary movie already. Yes, so we really have to understand what it is that makes it so hard to see bright things near faint things, so we can do something about it. Okay. So, I mean, here's the uh, camera I used to take that scary movie. I'm uh, a Nikon man myself, Paul. And basically this consists of a lens and a detector. I mean, any Canon engineers in the audience will s lynch me for that. There are a few more things in the middle here, but one can simplify it as this. Yep. As this, what you've got to imagine is you've got light rays coming in from different angles here, like the red and the white, and they will be brought to a focus at different points on the detector. So the different angles map onto a different place on the detector, and we should see things. So that doesn't really explain what's going wrong. Yep. So here's a still frame from the scary movie. And you can see this is when the light was not too bright. You can see the candle over here. And you can see the light. And indeed, the headlight is there. The candle is there. They've landed on quite separate parts of the detector. So all is good. Yes. But now when you increase the light by a few a bit more, still okay. that light's coming from here and that's coming from there. But you're being to see that not all the light's coming there. For example, look up there. No light's there in either situation. But if you go back, it's quite dark. There it's quite bright. And that's presumably not because the light is being misdirected now. It's just that there's so much light that we're seeing light where it, uh, it was not so obvious before. Yeah, and if you go later still, you can see that the light from over here and from over there is you know, like up there. Go back a bit, there was no light up there. Where's that come from? Right. And even more later on still. Now it's impossible to see anything else. So, Paul, people always like, uh, when I'm out showing them the sky, to talk about the magnification of our telescopes. And so you might be tempted to think you can solve this problem just by raising the magnification from your, your cannon to you know, a big telescope. Yep, well, let's go through and look at the, um, exactly where the light's coming. We'll explain why the magnification isn't going to help you. Um, so here's our image when it's not too bright. And we can turn that into a map of the brightness on the pixels. Okay. So here's a map of that. So you can see there's a lot of counts coming in these pixels over here. That's the main headlight. There's the lower headlight. Over there is the candle. Yep. And they're well separate. But you can see there's not a sharp edge here. So you're getting the light from the, uh, the headlight. But it doesn't drop to zero suddenly at the edge of the headlight. It sort of slants off gradually. Oh, As we ramp up to the brightness a bit higher, you can now see it starting off very gradually. So the candle's just barely visible now. Yep. So the light, and if you make it brighter still. So if we magnify in on that, we're just going to see the same thing everywhere. Yep. So the problem is the light's not going where it's supposed to go. Um, so instead of the light going like this, some fraction of the light's going elsewhere. Not a very big fraction, but if this red light was incredibly bright, even if only one part in a hundred or one part in a thousand or one part in a million was going the wrong direction, it's still going to swamp the rest of the stuff. And if you magnify that, let's take an image here, yep. and you magnify it, you're going to get a fainter but equally blurry image. You're not going to see anymore. You're just going to make the same misdirected light spread over more pixels, but it's not going to help you. Okay. So we need to think about how to get around this. We have technology on our side. Presumably, we can use that technology to solve this problem. 